Adams and Winterburn, that'll be a, a high spot for the Arsenal supporters here tonight, but I'm not quite sure how long it'll last. Steve Bold in particular was telling us maybe 10 minutes is about enough for him these days. Paula Vieira and Edu in midfield. Uh, Bergkamp, Francis Jeffers goes into hospital tomorrow to clear up, he hopes, that ankle trouble. And uh, Jeremy Aliadier, who scored the goals for got uh, Arsenal the FA Youth Cup a year ago and he's been close to the first team this season probably if they hadn't had such a, a fantastic season he might have got a game or two he's certainly one for the future Celtic only finished their SPL campaign yesterday and they based their side around the team that won at Aberdeen a change in goal Jonathan Gould son of former Arsenal forward Bobby replaces Rab Douglas and Alan Thompson comes in for Stylian Petrov John Hartson, sorry to miss out against an old club, he's away with Wales. 19-year-old Sean Maloney scored a wonderful winner at Pitodri yesterday. And uh, they might be short of one or two star names, Celtic, but they come here with an intention of giving the customers value for money. And, uh, of course, they've beaten Manchester United. That was uh, in August for Ryan Giggs' testimonial. And uh, they also won at Leeds just a few days ago so uh, they mean business usually a check on the, the substitutes tonight Ian Wright John Lukic coming back from uh, their retirements to honor Tony Adams it'd be fun to see them play but Thierry Henry had to pull out late on because he's just feeling that uh, knee you saw it perhaps strapped up when he played against Everton on Saturday and obviously he doesn't want to take any risks with the World Cup just around the corner England's Arsenal's England quartet, of course, are in mid-air at the moment on their way to Dubai. Well, Celtic fans have come here. More stories out this weekend about the possible switch of Celtic and Rangers into English football. As a Scot, Frank, what do you make of that? I'd love to see it. Um, I think they would be very good for English football. Uh, and also in Scotland, although there would be a, maybe a lack of interest, but for all the other clubs that's left in Scottish football, for an opportunity to win the Scottish Cup and the Championship, when really it's between Rangers and Celtic all the time, would also be wonderful for them as well. I hope it happens. It might take some time, but I would like to see it happening. Well, it's certainly a subject about which we'll hear plenty of debate, I'm sure. But let's concentrate on the evening, Tony Adams' evening. Tom Boyd spent a bit of time in London as a player for Chelsea. He's come back and... Uh, had a distinguished time with Celtic and it might continue there's some talk that he has one or two other options for next season but Martin O'Neill on our programme yesterday was not ruling out the fact that Boyd might be in the green and white hoops again next season and what a record incidentally for Celtic 103 points out of 114 to win the SPL and that big piece of silverware. Do you know, I think that's quite remarkable, Martin, for Martin O'Neill as well, to maybe get his team up for every match and sometimes the opposition aren't the very best. And uh, that in itself, some people would think that's easy, I think that's even more difficult. Well, the plan is, as you would expect, for the two teams to come out and form a, a guard of honour. James, all the glory. Yeah, some heartaches as well. And the odd arm raised to say, hey, ref, offside. Exactly, yeah. You reckon he was born like that with his right arm up in the air. I tell you, there'll be some celebrations after the game as well, Martin. You know, I remember David O'Leary's, and he walked all the way around the pitch to Simply the Best, the music. Uh, it was very, very emotional. I'm sure it'll be the similar game tonight. Well, Celtic kick off. The uh, pitch drenched by rain for much of the day here. Here's Jackie McNamara. And Steve Bold wins an early header. Vieira, Bergkamp. Steve Guppy, Englishman of course, is one or two beatings on this ground in his time with Leicester City. Martin O'Neill lost all his premiership games here. But uh, during his time as Leicester's manager, he did uh, mastermind the exit of Arsenal from the FA Cup. After getting a draw at Highbury, they went on penalties at Filbert Street, you might recall. Bergkamp. Here's Ali Adier. Showed too much of it to Robo Balde. 
I watched Stevie Gupp again in across uh, last night. I was trying to switch in between the, the games between Celtic and uh, and Birmingham. Uh, and uh, he was on the byline. We know him whatsoever. And they get one of the most beautiful crossing. He is one of the best crossers of the game, isn't he? He still is. Of course, it got him a, an England cap. Vieira. They do. Pleased to be a part of it. His uh, wife at Arsenal much more now in the centre of things than it was at the start of the season. The flick from uh, Maloney has got uh, plenty to offer, it seems. Dixon and Duffy. Battle resumed. For one last time. Going up against Momo Silla. I think Silla will learn very quickly after about 10 minutes or so that that arm of Tony Adams will be up a few times and he'll have to bend his runs a little bit more, not running straight lines. Here's Ray Parler, still being mentioned in dispatches with England's midfield problems as to whether he might get a very uh, late involvement. It's on the ball here. It's a... These uh, modern day footballs certainly fly. Yeah, they do. They move around a lot as well. And uh, I'm a little bit surprised that he hasn't been called up. I think he's formed, especially in the last few weeks, he's been absolutely top class. He's rested as well. He was injured for quite a lot of the the season so he's as fresh as a daisy to go in he's adaptable as well a little bit surprised with that one man Adams challenging Silla typically touched by Colin Healy who's been playing in England for part of the season on loan at Coventry Celtic flew down today they had a three hour coach journey back to Glasgow from Aberdeen yesterday evening Most of them will be fresher than Steve Bold was feeling when he arrived here tonight. Yeah, I'm sure. Nigel Winterburn, of course, has been playing uh, pretty regularly in the Premiership. Still waiting to see whether there might be a late offer for another season with West Ham. He was telling us before the game he's very keen, Nigel Winterburn, to play one more season than Lee Dixon. <laughs> and Dixon is uh, pulling down the curtain, of course, and officially has done. Be done by Steve Bold. Vieira for Parla. Francis Jeffers. Won't be, uh, he was telling me watching the Youth Cup final. He's interested in it, of course, as a former Everton man. Everton against Villa tomorrow. As he will be in hospital. This is Edu. Comes out of Jonathan Gould. Back to the Brazilian again. Aliadier's in the middle. But so too is the son of a former teammate of yours, Bobby Gould. Yes. Yes, I remember Bobby very well. I think I was at the I was at a game of golf today, Martin went for Bob Wilson's uh, foundation and I've seen Bobby briefly. He never seen me, but uh, I think he was out playing golf in the rain today. And he's due here tonight. Is he? Yeah. Just going to say about Edu there, he's been remarkably good. I mean, in the last few months he's just come on leaps and bounds. He had a wonderful cut fell, a great game against Manchester United as well. That was a player that I'd almost forgot about, Martin, because he, we hadn't seen him for nearly a year. And uh, what a great addition to the squad that Wenger's got now. Shot by McNamara to Tom Boyd. Guppy. Now Celtic, we should uh, not forget how they developed under Martin O'Neill. 200 points in two seasons. To win the championship back to back to uh, end that. Uh, Remarkable uh, run of Rangers. Parler. Of course, Rangers got some revenge in the Scottish Cup final recently. Guppy. Uh, Winterberg. He just got a touch away from. Uh, Jamie Smith moves the ball about well, Celtic, don't they? It might be in a, a league that's maybe a little bit inferior to the Premiership, but they certainly switch the play and play good attack in football. Not a big host. He's uh, up. Oh, 
autographed shirt by Tony Adams of this particular strip. Would be a good investment if you could get your hands on one. Well, that should go for quite a few thousand pounds. Mm. Dixon. Vieira. Nice small uh, not really announced their lineup until about ten minutes before the kickoff. Waiting to see who arrived, who was uh, available, available to play. And here's Edu and, and Patrick Vieira is flanked offside. Guppy. Here's little uh, Sean Maloney is uh, prepared to take Arsenal on then and I think he'll be taking this just as seriously as if it were a match with points or progress in a cup at stake. Uh, I don't know whether you saw it Frank but it was a <laughs> wonderful scene in a, a game at Hearts quite recently when Maloney and uh, another young player, Lynch, were fighting over taking a penalty. They both got two goals apiece in the <laughs> game. This was in a league game, two youngsters uh, going brilliant. to the bench saying, hang on, he wants me to take it, no, he wants me to take it, both <laughs> on a hat-trick. And uh, Maloney was... took it, I think, against the wishes of the management, but missed it. Did he? <laughs> so he scored last night, though. He scored a great free kick yesterday. This is uh, Nigel Winterburn in Arsenal, red and white again. Cut out by Healy. Silla, who's uh, an international with Guinea. Healy again. And the end, uh, sounds like rather standing off and allowing Dixon to tidy up with the help of John Lukic, who of course won a championship medal not only with Arsenal but also with Leeds United as well. Imagine Silla getting a little bit of stick off the Rangers supporters with a name like that on the Saturday night, man. <laughs> Fowler. Tight run for Ali Adier. Tappy wanting it wide here and uh, going to get it from Thompson. Thompson again. See Dixon's angle there, he's playing him inside, doesn't want Guppy to go on his left foot and try to show him in towards Patrick Vieira, which is, uh, which is a really good move really because he's certainly not as good with his right foot as he is with his left and he is one of the best crosses I've seen for years. Winterberg. Well, ten minutes is nearly up for Steve Ball, yeah. but he's uh, well. He's with the Arsenal kids, isn't he now, Martin? He's with the Arsenal kids, so I would imagine he's keeping himself reasonably fit as well. And he, he still looks pretty good just now, doesn't he? Not an ounce of weight on him since he, since he's retired. There he is again. And the idea, Jeffers. Bergkamp able to turn. And the idea goes to the right, and Bergkamp goes for goal. How old were you when you finished, Frank? I uh, played to uh, Queen's Park Rangers in the top flight till I was 37. I actually should have stayed on, uh, but we trained exceptionally hard, Martin, in those days, you know, and I think I trained too hard. I think that Arsene Wenger's teams train very lightly and they keep their energy for Saturdays, and looking back on it, I think that was the correct thing to do, especially when you got older. Um, you just get so tired after matches, you need time to recover. But what Arsenal have got, and uh, I know exactly what you're saying about Arsene Wenger and, and almost the stopwatch time training, no, yeah. no going on beyond the appointed time, as some teams tend to do, players like to Absolutely. stay out and enjoy themselves. But what has really impressed me about Arsenal, and uh, particularly in the big games towards the end of the season, is the, the upper body strength that they've got. They, yeah. They've got fantastic football technique, but they're, they're real athletes as well. Well, I mean, when you look at Henri, I mean, he's such a finely tuned athlete, he looks magnificent. No, there's a lot to commend it, you know, the, the, the state of the pitches in comparison to how we played. Look at this pitch here, end of season, it looks better than our pitch did at the beginning. Yeah. It's Paul Burgess, the groundsman, groundsman of the year.
bit ambitious, Tony Adams with the switch of the play then. Top. They do. Celtic held a good line. Yeah, they do. They've done that two or three times now, Martin. They look as though they're well organised. They know when to drop off, when to hold the line. And um, I think the art of that has gone out of the game, actually. And it's uh, when you see the, the old back four that Adams, Paul, Winterburn and, and Dixon and all that, uh, they had it off to a tee, but Celtic looked well organised there. Yeah. Is healing just missed out to the uh, Republic of Ireland World Cup squad. This is Maloney caught offside. Martin O'Neill just uh, peering through the rain. Judged by Boyd that time, V course behind him. Thompson, up from uh, McNamara. Guppy. Martin V course who uh, was a threat not just as a footballer, but uh, it's not too dramatic to say this, but as a human being by a really serious virus that affected the brain. And it's marvellous to see him playing again the day. Bob Baldy has done very well as well, isn't he? A bit uncompromising at times, but it's been a big success for Celtic. Silla. Tamara making a run. Goes wide to Smith, who is quick. And he's forced a corner. Nigel Winterman might be thinking that's all I need is a flyer on my side of the pitch for a testimonial game. I've not seen him before uh, yesterday's game, Martin, and uh, I've just seen him picking up the ball and running about 40 yards. Very, very quick. Good cross about as well. But, well, Nigel's still a very fit lad at his age. Adams. Uh, Aliadier, then Parler. Aliadier again. Boy. Celtic, in two years under Martin O'Neill, just beaten four times in the SPL. Yeah. Must be a marvellous manager, Martin you know, Going there and uh, Rangers dominating him for so long, it's a, it was a risky thing to do, but he's done such a fantastic job. We've got a glimpse of Steve Wolford alongside yeah, him there. Who he's been their coach for a long time, hasn't he? Won the FA Cup with Arsenal back in 1979. But, uh, as you say, it's been a, a long time assistant to Martin O'Neill on the coaching side. Flag has gone up. Yes. Having a, a little look towards the bench, Steve Paul. <laughs> he just got his hands on his knees there. It's good the way they do that, you know. Uh, if Tony Adams starts attacking the ball, they come behind him, Martin. They don't stay off. They come right in behind him as well, slightly staggered. And uh, if the ball is played through, somebody's always offside. And uh, Tom Lukic enjoying that moment. And the distribution is good as well. Plenty of space for Carl. Jeffers. Third count coming from the far side. Parler taking it on himself. Jeffers. That's first of all by Vikhorst. Cleared by Balder. Tony Adams has been Arsenal's captain since 1988. Three decades, it's amazing that, isn't it? That will never ever happen again. I can't see it happening again. Brilliant. And the club kept faith with him when he uh, was not available, shall we say, for a period. <laughs> Thompson. Maloney. 
positive in his movement again, but the pass was blocked by Vieira. Celtic fans yesterday at Aberdeen uh, chanting, bring on the Arsenal. Mm -hmm. yeah, phenomenal fans. Right well by Jamie Smith. Healy. Thompson just drifted into space ahead of him, but he uh, looked for Silla. The uh, interpretation of the laws of the game were pretty different when Steve Bowles started. Oh, yeah. His tackling from behind uh, was uh, certainly the feature of mo most of his career until the referees decided to put that on the band list. Oh, Adams and Bowles, playing against them must have been murder because uh, they could rattle you from behind. Both of them are about six foot four, very strong. It must have been very difficult playing against them. That goes Boyd. Gould's kick has only gone straight to Vieira. Touched by Aliadier, Edu. Oh, how lucky. The night for flicks and tricks. That came Winterburn, not wanting to give anything away. Really, Nigel Winterburn looks only a friendly, but he looks as though he could just get him playing in Arsenal's back four. No problem at all. That's no insult to West Ham either, but he really does look so comfortable there. Strangely enough, there was a, a little bit of gossip earlier in the season. Arsenal had a lot of problems at left back. And Nigel Winterburn, just for a week or two, wasn't in the West Ham team, and one wondered whether, yeah. <laughs> whether something, a deal might have been done. Ashley Coles had knee problems happily, uh, his foot closed behind him. Matthew Upson got injured playing at left back. And one course will be out for most of the rest of this year. He can play at left back. So when Tony Adams has uh, played and looked to his left, as one or two unfamiliar people there. Guppy to show the half of the crosser again. Smith. Oh, and Thompson. With plenty to aim at, but on his weaker foot. Yep. Decent chance. It was a good chance, man. As you said, he's got a fantastic left foot. His right foot's not bad as well, but just you, you lean back every now and again and they get caught there and it was way high and wide. But nice to get a goal here because the football's been quite good. And Celtic are usually involved in these testimonial games and there's always lots of goals and I'm sure there will be before the end. And there were two up at Old Trafford in Ryan Giggs' game in about eight minutes. That was a tremendous but game, wasn't it? Was. <laughs> was. Very competitive that game, wasn't it? Actually. Adams hits it away here, but Silla tries to do something with the header. Actually, Frank, on a more serious note, it was a bit of a taste of things to come for Manchester United. They did leak a lot of early goals when the going got serious. Yeah. And now Parler's caught in possession, Maloney. Edu. I like a bit of fun in the testimony, but I do like it to be a little bit competitive as well, because... When you see just people knocking the ball about and there's never any shots at ball, it can get a little bit boring towards the end. I know that it's only for a, a festive occasion for Tony Adams, but it is nice to see a few goals going in as well. well Martin O'Neill, very concerned that uh, Celtic played their part here tonight. Yeah. A little bit worried about the, the lack of star names in his team. Oh, very, uh, very understandable circumstances. Andrews international calls. John Hartson would have loved to have played. In fact, I think asked for permission to come and play half an hour. Yeah, and of course, Wales play Germany. You can understand Mark Hughes saying, sorry. Yeah. yeah, he's done well there too, hasn't he? He's resurrected his career again up there, scoring lots of goals and going great. Now, if this was stage manager, of course, Steve Bold would flip this on and yes. Tony Adams would head it in. Yeah. Copy big stuff. I don't know if I've had much chance to practice it. Too high. Oh, that punch here. Vieira, back to the corner taker, Bergkamp. Bowl oh, gets to it. Now comes Jonathan Gould. And Duffy's uh, right foot has sent it high rather than the uh, way up towards the halfway line, but now Maloney's on the move. Winterburn slips, but still got a foot to it. Bergkamp. 
Edu is uh, very disappointed, uh, we understand, not to have been called up by Brazil for their World Cup squad. He hasn't got a senior cap. Uh, I think his form's come just a little bit late, Martin, for them to really recognise it. You know, in the last month he's been a tower of strength. He's always been a similar type of player to Vieira, winning tackles and coming away with the ball, distributing it really well, good left foot on him. But probably a little bit late. Carla, Vieira, who is most certainly going to the World Cup. Francis Jeffers enjoyed his goal against Everton here on Saturday, but he'd love to uh, get himself injury free so that Arsenal could uh, start to get full value for that £8 million or so. A player of his quality, somebody that's happy in the box, has been needed here, especially at times when you see wide players getting to the byline, looking up, no one really happy to be in there trying to win that ball, and he likes that type of player, but he's been just injury after injury. And pulling out there by Healy, really. Good foul, Vieira. The thing is about Wenger, though, he's so patient, Martin. You know, he just waits and waits and waits, and he's done it with quite a number of players, and they've come through in the end, like you do, and players like that. And we've got one back on the line. Yep. So Bergkamp can clip it in. Not quite far enough to where <laughs> Lee Dixon had taken up an intelligent position. Yep. It's interesting, that, you know. Jeff, oh, lovely ball. Dixon put all his energies into uh, just getting to the ball. <laughs> a little bit of Archie Barchi there with uh, Robert Balde. Yeah, pointing each other. Yeah, yeah, that's far from friendly. Yeah. That was serious stuff. How was Dixon? I would go on my bike back to the right back position. Yeah. He's <laughs> a bit too big to handle him. Baldi's a big lad. Tony Dixon has had his uh, testimonial, that was Real Madrid. <laughs> Otherwise there might be one vote in the Celtic camp yeah. against coming back here for the right back. Good. Silla. <laughs> McNamara. You can imagine Martin O'Neill taking this game slightly more serious than maybe us and Wenger, Martin, because if they are talking about getting in this football, he'll be watching how his players do against the, you know, the Premiership players. They've done well in Europe, didn't they? You know, the Juventus game and all that, they've you know, made their fans proud of them. But to, to have it week in, week out would be another different type of test for them. I think they could eventually do it. And he goes around the outside. And... Uh, he bowled, did enough on the stretch, it was a desperately difficult ball to deal with. Thompson. <laughs> and there's another indication of how seriously Celtic are taking it with Silla chasing back. Great value for money if you ever want to try and get a testimonial team, aren't they? You know, they never take it easy, they, they know they've got stacks of supporters come and watch them, and they always try and do their best. Full high for Jeffers, they don't head many goals, Arsenal. But Jeffers did head his against Everton on Saturday, only his second Premiership goal for the Gunners. Now that came very early in the season here against Bolton. Former Bolton man, Alan Thompson. Guppy. Come on, come on, Healy. Moving out to Edu. Bergkamp. Oh, 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 fully fit, Francis Jeffers. Would have certainly had a better chance of making something of that bright idea from Dennis Bergkamp. McNamara. This is uh, Maloney. And that is typical Tony Adams. <laughs>
Have a look at Tony Adams. He, after he made the tackle, man, he's pushed up 15 yards. Have a look at Steve Bold. He's still 20 yards behind. Here's Jeffers with a chance. Well, he did miss kick it. He's still produced the corner. I'm sure he would love to put that in the back of the net just to build up his confidence and that's what's needed. Adams is too tight. Adams and Bolder stepping back from a corner kick. They usually go up for them. Dixon is kicking away from Balder. <laughs> I can't understand, Frank, given that you were a, a centre-back at certainly for the, for the second half of your career. But it was George Graham that taught this back four how to defend your mate. I know, I know. How, how did that happen? Listen, we can't believe it either. <laughs> George was the last guy who was going to become a, a football manager, but he turned out to be an excellent one as well. Thompson has got a chance on his left foot this time, forced wide by Lukic. Back to Guppy. as if he'd never been away. He does really well, Guppy, in those positions. There's no room to move. He shift moves it, it almost it. backwards. He just moves it almost backwards and sidewards and gets his, his ankle round it and he puts in some fabulous crosses. Yes, and of course, he came uh, originally with Martin O'Neill at Wickham. Yes. From Leicester, now together in the third club. And there's been a lot of success along the way. He likes his width in these teams, Mark Manuel, doesn't he? He always likes the wingers playing there. And he likes his three at the back as well, he doesn't does. he? And he likes plenty of height. Same at uh, Leicester City as well. Three big centre-halves, two wide players. Incidentally, that win by Celtic yesterday avenged their only Premiership defeat of the season, which was at Aberdeen back in December. Yeah. I've heard some great reports about Ali Adia, Martin. It's the first time I've actually seen him play. The era, who we've all seen plenty of and enjoyed. Edu. He's hit one shot tonight, but for a Brazilian, the point Andy and I have made a few times, he's quite reluctant to shoot, given the power that he's obviously got in that left foot. Well, Maloney came back <laughs> yeah, thinking he was going to get caught offside that's the old decoy he used to do that pretend something shout offside and step up a half a yard and the forward usually comes back and really he could have been through healing brilliant how they hold their line there it's absolutely brilliant it's an excellent tactic, but not many back fours get the, the hang of it, you know, they find it too difficult. Somebody always drops off, but they hold their line, then attack the ball. And even though the Stevie Bowles not been playing for ages, it still works well. Ingrained habits. Quite the final ball. That was a problem they had in the game yesterday. They thought yeah. that play was good. It's a sharp little player, Maloney, isn't he? He changes his runs as well. He bent his run there. He's realised he's getting caught offside a few times and he's got the intelligence to then come sideways and, and then try and make it through. But it was a poor pass. Kathy goes in there to win it back. Healy. Silla. 
Sheffers trying to steal it away from Balde and uh, he caught the Celtic defender. Yeah, caught him late there. See Jefferson's eye uh, certainly uh, from that angle. Look, he was coming across towards the ball and not directly at Balde. So let's hope it was accidental. But anyway, the play went on, and uh, when Dermot Gallagher did stop it for a Celtic free kick, a bit cold for the family watching, but it's heating up for the man himself because Celtic are within range of the Arsenal goal. Thompson! Oh, what a goal. We talked about the left foot. And there it was, a perfect example. It zipped in. Bounced just before Lukic as well, and really picks up speed after that. Superb shot, right in a far corner. Couldn't do much about that, I don't think. Well, Celtic making a point against a Premiership club. Not Arsenal's uh, first choice, not for this season. Back uh, line and goalkeeper were first choices a few years back, but anyway, they're in front and they're wonderful supporters, uh, letting everyone around the capital know it. Celtic so supporters, Martin will take this as proof that they can <laughs> handle anyone in the Premiership. They really will. They don't care if it's a friendly or not. Bergkamp. Winterburn. I saw one Celtic fan with a shirt, half green and white hoops, half red and white for Arsenal now. Yeah. He's gone to some trouble to get that sorted out for yeah, tonight. He, he probably had a Leeds one a few days ago at Elland Road. Yeah, they live for football, don't they? to link up with Silla. Celtic could be in again here. Parler. And the idea. Patrick Gare to think about the shot and now he probably wishes he had had the shot I think that's about the only slight weakness that Patrick Gare has got in his game he, his finishing shot isn't always as good as it should be and I think he's a, a player who potentially should score a lot of goals and we dealt with by the captain <laughs> and he seems to have brushed Siller aside who was down on his backside, looking uh, a bit dazed. <laughs> but a camp. And, uh, up behind by Balder. This time Adams is coming up. Arsenal behind. Bold is coming up. Ten minutes to go to half time. Bird camp. And out by. Big Horst. Oh, but uh, Maloney back behind the ball, and he almost was. Yep, not only was always done that in his play as well. Always got lots of bodies behind the ball. And if you take a long time in your build up, by the time you get to the 18 yard box, the only way you can get through them is across. So he gets three big centre halves, and then they head it away as well. So they're very difficult to break down. Here's Healy. Here comes Celtic again, but. Sean Maloney is offside. Oh. Balde, man of the match yesterday, hasn't got to half time tonight and he's been replaced by John Kennedy. Yeah, 
out here. But, uh, it's just caught by Boyd then. Very hard for the younger generation at Arsenal to crack getting into the first team squad, let alone the starting 11. Fiera. He's a little bit surprised, Patrick Vieira, about the uh, commitment of the opposition. Yes, yeah, so it will be. He just stood there. He's not even had a move yet. The ball's 50 yards away. Guppy. Healy. And Vieira. Started the move, he got back in the nick of time. But Martin O'Neill and John Robertson. Uh, so it's a league match, isn't it? The way, how intense they are. Look at Martin O'Neill. Aston Wenger's just sitting there. Martin O'Neill's quite intense looking. John Robertson, been down to the touchline and then getting back to him. And they really take these games pretty seriously, don't they? even if Holland had qualified he'd in a couple of years retired from the international scene Jeffers working hard to get there in front of Boyd Thompson to play on the retreat but here's Edu finding Bergkamp Edu's pushed on down that far side and the ball from Edu gave him something to chase big horse to having to yeah, bypass yeah. Nigel Winterburn to get the ball away from the danger area for Celtic Thompson like uh, most visitors to Highbury what uh, Celtic are enjoying is the playing surface here. Passing is good and crisp here, and they've got a man over, two men over, in fact. Guppy. Maloney. I mean, considering they played last night as well, or yesterday, Martin and travelling all the way down, still very sharp and putting everything into it, aren't they? I watched four or five of the Arsenal players and that when the ball broke down there. They just stood and walked back there. They're not really at it. But Celtic players are getting behind the ball and they're getting up overloading in the attack as well. Yeah. I read, yeah. And Arsenal got a corner. Then Bergkamp across to take it. Jefferson by the goalkeeper. Adams and Bold. So Edu's got a bit of height to try and uh, use here. Yeah, he stays out of it. It's over Bold. No, uh, three headers there for Tony Adams on his testimonial night. First testimonial, incidentally, wasn't a successful occasion. The start of the season against Crystal Palace, they only got around 12,000 here. This is a packed hybrid. And they're seeing a genuine game because the Celtic are making it that.
certainly not walking alone here and they're certainly not walking Celtic they're running and chasing and yep. I think that's why the, the, the fans constantly come down for every testimonial because they know they'll never get embarrassed Celtic will always give her the best and uh, it brightens up the game as well Edu Healy takes it from him Absolutely right with going to burn around. I just wonder whether Nigel Winterburn's taking the opportunity tonight to yeah. just uh, let anybody, anybody watching who might be looking for a left back. And he uh, probably is going to be available, or at least tell Glenn Roder that he shouldn't let him go. I can't believe why he is letting him go. Thompson, Silla. Well, when he got to it, you expected him to score, but he didn't. Yep, the chance here. I think John Lucas was ca he was caught a little bit on his line there. Um, in fact, all the Aston back four have pushed up. Is it Nigel Martin? He played everybody on side there. And uh, John Lukic maybe a fraction slow coming for it. Could have been a second goal for Celtic there. And Winterburn again. And uh, that was a distinctly genuine challenge. From Kennedy. Yep. Good tackle, man. Oh, what caught in me. Got the ball first. It was a two-footed tackle, but I don't think there was any intention except for going for the ball. But uh, Nigel's been used to that; he's done it all his life himself. <laughs> so, John Kennedy, who has the football in his blood, the grandson of the Celtic legend uh, Jimmy Delaney. Oh, yeah, I remember Jimmy Delaney well when I was a kid. He was a big, big hero in Celtic. Yeah. Let's just uh, break away while the treatment's going on here and hear some uh, tributes to Tony Adams from the uh, Arsenal staff of this season. No better leader I've ever played with. Um, just to watch him in, in, in action, obviously I've been out a bit this season, but to, to watch him from the touchline, still at the age of 35, 36, whatever he is, he's, um, he, he commands respect just from his presence and I can't talk hardly enough about him. Tony for me is a, is a great leader, not only on the pitch but uh, off the pitch as well. I think uh, he showed it many times in, in yeah on the pitch. Of course, everyone can see that, but uh, off the pitch, I think uh, yeah, there are a lot of examples of small things that he is arranging for us, and he uh, he gets it done. And yeah, f for me, he's he's, he's uh, an example of a great leader. A lot, a lot, because um, I was young and um, players like him were talking a lot. Uh, shows a way how to be uh, to behave on on out the pitch, and uh, to have him like example is fantastic for the for the young players. Half time on the big night for Tony Adams, but Arsenal are behind, and it was a terrific goal from Alan Thompson, a skimming free kick. One or two changes, I'm sure, for the second half. Maybe a side of Ian Wright in Arsenal, red and white again. But at half-time here, in the Tony Adams testimonial, it is Arsenal nil, Celtic 1. Arsenal in their own stadium, like Arsenal beat Manchester United. So it's, I'm looking forward to the second half, and I think a certain man called Ian Wright will get on the score sheet. No sign yet that Tony Adams is on his way to retirement. <laughs> Sleeves are rolled up for the second half. I think, I think that know, answers the question, A big you? smile on his face. He wants to get a goal, and I... It'd be nice if they got a penalty and Tony stepped up and took it. That'd be great. Thank you, Kenny. Back to Frank and Martin. Just uh, checking around the changes here, Paul. And Richard Wright is in goal for Arsenal for the second half. So we've got one Wright on the pitch. <laughs> Ian Wright came out and warmed up at half time. Kanu is on. Yep. 
Luzhny's on there as well. Yeah, Oleg Luzhny. Yeah. Looks like uh, Adli Adier's gone off. Yeah. And Edu. And of course John Lukic. But for Steve Bold, so much for 10 minutes, eh? He's out for the second half. Oh, he's out again. <laughs> that happened to me, I tell you what. Once you get out there and if you think you survive the first half an hour, you do not want to come off. It's great. Brings all the memories back again, Martin. You don't want to sit down at half time, though, do you? Because he might not get oh, up no, again. Obviously, true. he stayed on his feet. Oh, he'll be stiff in the next few days. <laughs> second half underway. Arsenal 1 0 down. Alan Thompson with a trademark free kick from that fearsome left foot of his. Hope that makes it clearer for you. Celtic just looking round, seem to be very much as they were. a player I'd love to see scoring more goals, Martin Canu, he, with his body swerves it sends half to the stadium off to the left and then the goal's wide open and then he, he scuffs his shot. It comes towards Tony Adams. Lushny. Oh, like Lushny finished limping here on Saturday and it was quite a moment really because Stuart Taylor was about to come on for Richard Wright to get the 10th appearance in his uh, Premiership medal yes. with it and Arsenal had only got that one substitution to make and uh, Lushley went down suddenly and it looked as though Taylor's moment might be ruined but Lushley soldiered on and he was obviously not too badly hurt because he's out here for the second half tonight. So. Healy Adams goes across and he just about conceded the contest with a certain amount of reluctance and Celtic still have a corner Uh, further out I think than maybe the corner plan was Kanu usually having to operate in midfield there's no way he's going to get into this back four that's for sure <laughs> Vieira Bergkamp on the right, Bergkamp just took his eye off the ball. But uh, then was caught. A little bit wider than uh, where Thompson had his shot from. But it's an opportunity for Adams to come up again. He did score at this end of the ground, the North Stand end in the FA Cup against Gillian. Oh, I oh, really want to see him score here tonight. That's as close to a cross in a telling <laughs> position that he's got. He's got a big smile on his face as well. Or else it's a grimace trying to get back at the halfway line, I'm not sure. I think it started as a smile, but quickly <laughs> became a grimace. Yep. And he went. Vieira. Forward for Celtic here. And it 
Gappy will get a cross in if he can. It comes off at the head of Bowl, collected by Smith. Mara went round the outside, but uh, Celtic looking the opposite direction through Thompson back to Guppy again. Thompson wants it back and gets it back. And more work of a pretty serious nature for Tony Adams. Yeah, he had to get across it to leave his man Silla there and go on to Thompson. Some of the midfield players of Arsenal are not tracking back. They're, when the ball goes behind them, they're just letting it go. Just, especially Vieira and people like that, just taking it a little bit easy tonight. Bold certainly isn't. Jeffers, now Vieira's making a run. It's Parler on the board. And Bergkamp. Celtic have regrouped. Yep, that's my hands. You take your time. The, the ball really was to Cano on this far side. He was wide open, but only for about three or four seconds. And then the Celtic shots get back down them again. Silla. Smith is with him, and uh, Silla looked for a bit of personal glory then. Yep. And he got uh, a bit of an earful, I think, from Alan Thompson. Again, which is not the sort of thing <laughs> you're expecting not the usual testimonial. testimonial. No. He really should have played it to Smith, who was just trying to get behind the Arsenal back four wall there. This is the kind of game that Cano should be absolutely brilliant in because he's got so many tricks, isn't he? You get a little bit more time and space than you get in a league game. And well, you should, but I'm you not should. sure that's the case today. Well, you're absolutely right, because Celtic do play at a higher tempo than any other team in a testimonial I've ever seen. They're quite committed. I'm not saying 100%, but they're not far short of it. And they did play a league game yeah. yesterday. Yep. Great credit to them. Man gets marvellous their attitude. Shows you they've got a hard, tough manager that won't stand for any nonsense. And we're talking about Guppy out there, and you've got John Robertson there, who was one of the best wingers I've seen for a few years. Vieira. Bergkamp has tried to give us a, a trick or two from his wonderful repertoire. Vieira was caught by Boyd. Kanu has a shot. I don't think Vieira was best impressed. Kanu, of course, also has got the World Cup on his agenda. Bulled up again, Martin. Yeah. Great run into the box. Thwarted yeah. again. It's been an Arsenal story, really. So look at the closing down there, Donnelly. I mean, he spins it about 40 yards, so close Nigel went to run down. And look at them going forward, Celtic as well. They <laughs> put it in, don't they? Drop it. Healy. And then he stayed out on the right hand side. Uh, Thompson and Guppy a chance to uh, get another of those brilliant crosses in. Oh, Silla. Just uh, Nigel Winterburn's touch. Arsenal needed it. Smith. McNamara. Flag has gone up. Uh, furious to Celtic fans at the clock end. <laughs> Just thought of one other thing Celtic might try, uh, it's working very hard to do here, stop Arsenal scoring. Yes, that's right, the side that scored in every Premiership game. Good point, Martin, good point, yes. Arsenal have caught that sort of a dilemma, Martin. They want to put on a testimonial game here and enjoy it, and yet they don't want to get beat being professionals at the same time. But if you don't match Celtic with, a, with their work rate, it's very hard to up your tempo and get into the frame of mind that you really need when you're playing against someone like Celtic. It's 1-0 against the Arsenal. Silla. Taking them on. Adams first across, Parler coming back. Winterburn was uh, caught upfield. Maloney. 
Wright and Smith. And, yeah. uh, Smith and Richard Wright was quick off the blocks. It gets me a bit silty is no matter who they play, whether it's in Europe or not. They never look frightened of anyone, Martin. You know, they're talking about could they play in the Premier League. But any time I've seen them against any big opposition, no fear at all. They go at them. Silla. He's got Thompson to his right, Maloney to the left. He could go through on his own here, Momo Silla. Beat everybody except Richard Wright. Yep. He's got a bit of pace on him. He's not afraid to have a go and take people on. The Celtic fans behind that goal make it like a cup final, don't they? How can you not play with, with fans like that behind you? I'd love to see Rangers and Celtic in the Premier League, I really would. It'd be, it's a great argument that's been going on for years and it would be terrific to test it out. It's what they would leave behind, I guess, is the, uh, what would happen to Scottish football. Or that. Well, at least they've got a chance of winning the Championship and that would make it a, a fresh competition, but maybe some of the interest would go out to football in Scotland, which would be a great shame because they're suffering already. I think someone's got the uh, previous ball as a souvenir. Oh yeah, great. I found one spare one anyway. Mm -hmm. so. Easing Kennedy out of it. I won't embarrass him by mentioning him by name, but one of the Celtic backroom staff who's been around a long time came in having had his first look at hybrid and said, uh, isn't it small? Yeah, ah, as compared it. to Parkhead. Yes. Well, it is really now, you know, I mean, that's one of the reasons, obviously, why Arsenal are moving, but I tell you what, it's small but beautiful. And don't forget, before all the seat stadium came in, you could get 65, 70,000 people in there. So it didn't seem so small then, but I have been up with Celtic Park, and it is much bigger, and it's tremendous as well. And that's what will happen with Arsenal in the next couple of years. And well, there's no offside this time. Silla. Looking at the referee, but all he's got is a corner. Short corner by Celtic, leading at Highbury by a goal to nil. He can cross with the right foot as well, and that was a, a decent effort it needed. Positive reaction from Richard Wright, and it got it. Vieira. Held it by, by Thompson. Wide it goes to Bergkamp. Look at Silla tracking back to stop Vieira getting on the ball. And to make Arsenal have to turn and defend again. The centre forwards come off as well, they're not content standing up against Tony Adams. They're not coming off, turning, going at them, will give them more problems and just standing up against them. Their work rate is terrific and it is a testimonial. They're not full out, Martin, but they're not far short of it. And as you said, when they lose the ball, everybody's behind the ball. When they attack, they'll get terrific support going forward as well. That's very simple tactics, but very good tactics. Dixon goes down again. I could say, of course, it's not the full-strength Arsenal team, but it's by no means the full-strength Celtic team either. No, nope, it is not. But I think Arsenal have got a different agenda. I'm not trying to make excuses for them, but they have got a different agenda. They've done everything they wanted to do. I think Celtic are still trying to prove that they're good enough for any country or any league. Well, it's uh, Juan, the Brazilian, who played for Arsene Wenger in the FA Cup against Gillingham. He has the uh, extraordinary squad number 57. So we might expect some variety to his play. Well, I haven't seen him, Martin. He talked earlier, Frank, about the problems at left back. It got him a game. He played left back in that FA Cup tie. 20 years old from Sao Paulo. And Arsenal do. Uh, 
scour the world yes, for talent, not just senior players, but young ones to give them a chance. Kanu! Uh, I think that he's capable of things like that much more than he actually does, and maybe it's all down to confidence, I don't know, but uh, Kanu scores about four or five a season, should be in the 15 bracket easy. He's got wonderful skills he's got. Silla. Just a little uh, overconfident then. And Vieira in the end to sort it out. And Juan making a run ahead of Parla. Jeffers. Catch on the shot. Sometimes that can work for the players ahead of the uh, man having the shot, but it just skidded away from Vieira. I think uh, in bringing on Juan, Arsene uh, Wenger trying to give Celtic a taste of their own medicine, a young, keen player with plenty yeah. to prove. Well, he's been up the right side, and then he's on the left side and running like a little hare. He's, he's very keen to show well. You know when you think about the uh, people trying to compare the double teams in that man, it is so difficult really, because uh, that's not us scoring, well hang on a minute here, Silla. Silla's away, he's got Steve Bold, Adams is trying to get back, it's still Silla. Oh, what a save. save by Richard Wright. Oh, well, I was going to say he was beaten on the follow-up, but uh, <laughs> Maloney didn't get the goal that was shaping up for him. <laughs> Stevie Bold's really, really struggling there, but he's done well staying on, but lovely display here by Silla. A little, a little trick there, terrific shot, wonderful save as well. I thought Maloney was going to bury it again, but it's another safe hit off Richard Wright. Completely Maloney in the mix again. Yep. Yeah, just saying there the, the difference of the double sides. Martin, you know, we played with maybe 15, 16 players and 71 all British players. Arsenal are combing the world, as you said there. You know, you can't really compare them. Is both your double side and the two double sides for us and Wenger were supreme powers at a time where the competition was very, very fierce. And yes, your joust with uh, Leeds United to win the league title, the final with Liverpool in the FA Cup, stand yeah. comparison with anything. But well, does Josh Graham come out with a comparison? Then I'm not trying to see we were better or anywhere like the double side, but point for point, uh, if we were getting three points, we would have been ahead of them. Both in, both in points and in goals against. But I think the, the modern team is absolutely unbelievable. The style of play, and uh, uh, it's the best I've seen of any, any Arsenal side. They've been tremendous. Did George take into account that uh, your team played 42 games and this team yeah. played 38? Yeah, he did. He took any uh, account of everything. Igor Stepanov is getting ready to come on. Another Arsenal change. Winterberg. Adams, 1-0 to Celtic, he could have led by more, maybe should have done with the uh, recent chances, Winterberg, Kanu, got Juan with him, oh. and he caused just enough depth in the Celtic defending there to stop the Nigerian going on one of those uh, marvellous Maisie runs of his. Lushny. If you talk about Celtic being a, a potential celebrity team for testimonials, uh, you think of Kanu, who could be uh, yeah, a one-man equivalent of the old Harlem Globetrotters on a football field. <laughs> absolutely, he's got bewitching tricks, isn't he? Some of the moves he does is absolutely unbelievable. Sweetie ball, going off, very good effort. Brilliant the old Cal Pena, two years into retirement. And he's played without the standards dropping for 64 minutes here. 
You know, everybody was raving about Tony Adams two, three, four, five years ago. I thought he was a fraction underneath Tony Adams. I thought he was so underestimated because Tony Adams was so good, but he was right alongside him, he was. Superb partnership they had. And of course he got a, a relatively belated call into the England, England side, yeah. He was quick as well, he could read the game, good understanding of the game. Superb serve he's been. So it's Adams and Stepanovs. Still a hero here at him, isn't he? And he's retired a few years and yet they still love Ian Wright. Interesting if he comes on, see how fit he is. Vieira. Look at the players behind the ball there, Martin. There's about nine players there behind the ball. If Arsenal are going to get a goal here tonight, they're going to have to really earn it. Dixon. Finish. Jeff has called out again, expecting a bit of license there, but this game's been going long enough now in this style to know that that wasn't going to be given to him, nor to Adams. <laughs> those are the ones that hurt, those are the ones that ache yep. the next morning when it's. Uh, Hard to get out of bed, and that's when you start thinking that maybe, maybe it's time to use the old expression to hang them up. He's been blessed with many things, Tony Adams, but he hasn't been blessed with the good weather for his night. The rain is relentless, and so in their style of Celtic. Vieira, Cano, Winterberg, and he's looking for Lee Dixon. Oh, what a good throw. How about that? Well, Tony Adams might play again. Lee Dixon won't not, uh, unless, of course, there's another call for a testimonial. Yeah. His official time at Highbury has come to an end, and uh, <laughs> my goodness, he deserves some salutes. Yeah. But he's got a goal here against the most obdurate Celtic. That was a goal you were talking about, Martin, as well. That's another game they've gone with scoring in it. And it was a difficult header as well. It wasn't easy as header. You had to sort of knock it back from the other side. Here it comes in here, the cross. Beautiful glancing header. No challenge here. But uh, still an excellent header from this point of view. That's good. We'll find out what happens now. So Lee Dixon levels it in the Tony Adams testimonial. Vieira. And it was a header. We say it was a header. Arsenal not getting headed goals. Yep. George Graham practiced him every single day, and yet Arsene Wenger doesn't. But Arsene Wenger scored more goals. And look at the adulation. Yes, yes. Oh, they love him, right, don't they? Well, he's coming back, Martin. they come back as a centre forward, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Winterburn just catching a piece of Alan Thompson. The spare Frank McClintox blushes incidentally. He's been signing autographs from our gantry all through half time. And he's part of the, uh, the Arsenal Hall of Fame, you bet. And of course is Ian Wright. And here's Smith. McNamara. Decent header in his own area. 
Parler. Very hard to wait the passes. Yes, skids off the surface, isn't it? I thought Kanu was offside there, but the linesman didn't think so. It's good, I mean, I'm, I'm watching Silk as well, but they're just about as good as Arsenal at holding the line, which is... Uh, all right, what's happening now? He's got his shot off here, right? Crowd are ready for him. Beautifully done. The Guppet, the Thompson. And there's Adams using the conditions for his advantage. Back comes Boyd. Smith get as he won't. So it is time for Ian Wright. And there's a 16-year-old there, Ross Wallace, for Celtic. And of course we shouldn't forget that Ian Wright did play, I think, 10 games for Celtic after he was released by oh, yeah. West Ham. Yep. Forgot about that. Can't quite say a, a foot in both camps. Not really. No. <laughs> not, doesn't stand comparison no, at to all. being Arsenal's all time greatest goal scorer. One's a lively little player, isn't he? He's full of energy and enthusiasm. Here's Dixon. Still can't get Ian right on. Maybe now. Dermot Gallagher goes across to supervise the substitutions. It's. Uh, Fanny Jeffers, who heads from Highbury to hospital, and we wish him luck with the operation that hopefully will clear up his persistent problems. Well, welcome back to the man with a sunshine smile, despite the rain. Mr. Entertainment these days. Yes, he is. He still looks very well, looks very fit. I don't know if he is, but he's not carrying any surplus weight at all. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Healy's gone off Mark Fotheringham has come on as well Going number 34 substitution to the tackling there Martin you know so it's a league match it's after him Stepanovs on to Burden in the end looking for Kanu using Ian Wright as a decoy right chatting away to Tommy Boyd Kennedy's in there, he really means it, doesn't he, when Kennedy plays, he tackles very firmly. Cardo. Good and header down there. Him. It's a three cost and strongly. Winterburn, having made one, makes the score one. Boy's first touch. Hotheringham has gone into midfield. Wallace on the left. With a little piece of the uh, testimonial at Ellen Road recently. 17 shortly. Plays at Highbury as a 16 year old. Vieira song, he comes from Senegal, he plays for Arsenal, of course he'll be playing against Senegal for France in the opening game of the World Cup. Well the crowd love him as well, don't they? And uh, sounds good news if he's going to stay. <laughs> <Is> <laughs> oh. <laughs> the spirit was willing, but yeah. I think the flesh was just a little bit weak. Oh, it's embarrassing that happens to you, done it myself. In goes Juan, whose uh, legs are a little bit uh, fresher. <laughs> of course, in the mind, you, you think you can still do exactly yeah. the same yeah. when you're in full training. The body doesn't come along with you, does it? No. 
Oh, he's a well, he is in full training. <laughs> there are other circumstances here. It is very slippery. And I don't think that was the reason Ian Wright went down. Certainly not the reason that uh, Juan ends up on the deck. It's a foul. To Lushkin. Ambitious from Tony Adams and uh, spotted by Maloney. Thompson. Major honours in his Arsenal career, nine as captain, two of course this season. Capacity crowd, 38,000, the attendance up on the board. In honour of the captain. Silla. football for you tomorrow 8 o'clock FA Youth Cup final fantastic event and uh, produce some great players international players Everton and Aston Villa first leg Sky Sports 1 tomorrow Smith and uh, Wallace and Tony Adams in the thick of it there with Silla and Richard Wright was uh, Struggling to regain his position. Done really well there, Adams. It was a great block that was. Lee Dixon got left in his heels there. And it was a good attempt and it was heading goalwards as well, but Tony Adams blocked it well. Very busy team, aren't they, Martin, you know? Never standing still, we're always on the move, we're always closing down. Just thinking, uh, Wallace is 22 years younger than Lee Dixon yeah. <laughs> on the far side of the yeah. pitch. Fotheringham yeah. trying a trick against Patrick Vieira, who's trying to see the funny side of it. Yeah. Thompson repeat the feat of the first half. Jackie McNamara is there as well. But it's Thompson and Richard Wright fares a bit better than John Lukic. Superb shot, wasn't it? What was that? 40 yards out, man. Drilled it well. Good save. Here's Wallace again. He's a bit sharp too. Poorly done. Going to Winterburn, certainly uh, fit enough to go the distance here. I think Arsenal are going to need him to do so. Celtic are about to uh, bring on more of the kids. Just noticing the boy Kennedy there. Every time he rattles into the tackle, he doesn't, he doesn't notice a friendly. The backup goalkeeper is uh, Mikhail Herbe. French goalkeeper in uh, his first season with Celtic and he's going to get uh, 10 minutes or so at Highbury in the place of Jonathan Gould who was eventually beaten by Lee Dixon's header Ryan McCann number 28 Tony McParland is on Alan Thompson goes off to the relief of Richard Wright, I'm sure. And, uh, and the 
Zlatan. Tony Smith is going off. And this is John Paul McGovern. Martin O'Neill uh, choosing the opportunity to give some experience to uh, a group of players who've been a long way away from the first team on a regular basis this season. Yeah, also to give the players a rest as well after playing yesterday too. And a long season as well for them. Uh, opportunity should Tony Adams score to put Arsenal in front for the first time tonight so they're trying to keep their tabs on him oh, <laughs> off McNamara Some very good shot to the crowd. Just good there, there. there's a surprise. Yeah, great report. He's always had it with the, with the fans. Yeah, the mix of all the Arsenal supporters this time. I think Arsenal having made something like uh, 10 million pounds in prize money alone this season yeah. can afford the odd football to go adrift tonight. Yeah. Yeah. His best to get there. Ian Wright, likewise. Arms corner. He's back on the ball. Parler's cross. Comes out to Vieira. And Wright couldn't get it down. Nor could Juan. Juan looks quite good, man, doesn't he? I mean, he's very lively and. Uh, and he's so full of enthusiasm, but he's, he's ball controlled, he's left on cross, he's been all in pretty good standards. He's another of those, you just wonder if he doesn't make the breakthrough. 2021, he's got to be playing somewhere. It's a trouble nowadays, you know, the youth policy, it's very hard for him to break through because it's difficult for us and Wenger to give kids chances. And when they make mistakes, it's usually in their first year or so. You could lose six points by that time. His latest... Uh, Swathe of changes by Martin O'Neill. Right, Kanu. Here's Vieira. Juan. And this is Lee Dixon. <laughs> Hunt for more goals, scoring glory. Lushny. Look at the work they're doing. Changing from position to position, closing down, never hanging off them. They retired after this game, Celtic. They really well. They put a lot into it. Well, Nigel Winterburn hasn't quite gone the full distance. Liam Childers, another of the uh, players coming through the ranks here, 20 years old, comes from Chelmsford, had a spell in the Football League on loan with Northampton. And he comes in to play, I should say, uh, on the left of Tony Adams, everything should be related to the Arsenal captain tonight, he's at left back. I was just thinking before that substitution, Frank, Patrick Vieira, with all that's at stake for him in the World Cup, and here he is still going strong, with plenty of uh, meaty tackles around him. Yes, I know. I'm a wee bit surprised he's still on, actually. I thought under the circumstances he might have been taken off. He's not getting involved in too many heavy tackles himself, but it can happen by accident. Of course, the man who has captain Arsenal so often this season in the absence of Adams. He only played 10 games in the Premiership, only uh, the minimum to qualify for a medal. But 
Scarlett. And now Fothering. Vigos, who's uh, been there from the start. Silla. This is McGovern. Palms cross. Coming out by Luznik. Kanu deep. Coming to the final five minutes. hesitates to say of Tony Adams playing career at Arsenal but it could just be that suggestion that uh, Tony Adams may make his own exit before the final whistle. Four yeah, minutes it? away from that. Yeah. Quack. Oh, Oleg Lushner has never scored a goal in an official match for Arsenal. Parler, of course, has. And has a most famous goal to his name now. But and the FA Cup final, Arsenal's way against Chelsea. Very modest he was about it afterwards. Yeah, he is in his comments, isn't he? Mm. He is very modest, lad. Actually, uh, he doesn't score many goals, but he usually scores crackers, doesn't he? They're usually brilliant goals when he does score. The average is about one every 13 games when you look over his career. Yeah. But most of them are particularly memorable ones. Long range, he loves to have a crack. Kanu might have a crack himself here. Right. It's, uh, I don't know what they want to see more, an Ian Wright goal or a Tony Adams goal. Yeah, well, just a little bit, uh, it was a good turn, and then his first touch away from the ball then, just took it too far away from him. But it still looks quite sharp, he must do a little bit of sport still. There's Tony Adams up now. I don't think Celtic will give him that either. Someone's coming uh, back to track him again. No. Just sum him up. Tony Adams? Yeah. Well, you couldn't get a better centre-half because it's not just about your ability, Martin, and organisation, which is vitally important, but he's like another manager out there. He leads his team, he leads by example, and you don't often get players like that. And to stick at one club as long as you have, it's, um, it, it's quite remarkable and it's a shame from England's point of view that he isn't a couple of years younger uh, and a little bit free of, more free of injuries. He's limping just now but still working his way back in that back forward. He's a manager's dream, really, quite honestly. If you were a manager and got Tony Adams on your side, especially a young, thrustful one when he was a few years ago, magnificent. And if you could get 10 or 15 games out of him for another season, would you take oh, it? Oh, definitely. You'd have him just to be around your dressing room, I really mean that as well. I think he fancies another goal as well, look, he's off. He is, as he set off, of course, in 98 uh, when Steve Ball put him through against Everton on that championship winning day. But he'll have to work for Everton against Celtic. <laughs> they won't hand it to him, even as his testimonial. I don't think he'll get back from that run. Silla. Here comes v -Cost. To that. Still looking to win it for Celtic. Yep. Good effort as he well. He is a fit boy. He played uh, the whole game yesterday and 
another 90 minutes here tonight it is thank you time and it's mutual homage paid at Highbury to Mr Arsenal if it is the farewell it could not be more fitting the best part of 20 years of a life that has not been without its troubles but there has never been any doubt about Tony's devotion to Arsenal Football Club nor the Arsenal fans devotion to him Why can't football go on forever? It's amazing. It's one of the most disappointing times in your life when you've got to finish a game that you love. And it's such a short career, although he has had a, a really long one, 19 years. But uh, just when you're thoroughly enjoying it, just when you know so much about the game, your legs start to go a little bit. So now Ian Wright has the stage really all to himself. <laughs> yeah, right. He's running out of time. <laughs> Javier, incidentally, who was substituted at half time, has come back on again. Celtic, as always, have played their part on these occasions. And the biggest compliments you can pay about the evening really is it has been worthy of the man. Absolutely. <laughs> Terrific crowd, good natured. Very competitive, Celtic doing tremendously well, always make it a good game Celtic, one goal each, lovely way to finish the match isn't it? And two goals, both from Englishmen, yeah, that's Alan right. Thompson for Celtic, yes. Lee Dixon for Arsenal. Absolutely. There's Martin O'Neill out telling the Celtic players to get up to your crowd, Enjoy the home supporters or the way supporters. Thank you to his uh, teammates and to the opposition who uh, probably at times played with a bit too much feel for some of the Arsenal players. Great effort by Patrick Vieira to be part of it, representing the French contingent. Thierry Henry not to quite fit enough to participate, but he was here to cheer and he was not alone. We've seen that smile. He's a philosopher now, Tony Adams. Yeah. He's been talking about maybe going to university to get the education that, of course, he couldn't have as a young footballer, and he probably didn't want them. It's been a, a yeah. consistent career, but it's been very much a change of lifestyle. Well, you asked Tony how he, how he is now, and he says, no, the question is, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> he turns up in the room the other way now. So he's, uh, he has changed quite a lot. He's trying to learn to play the piano. How can you have a big tough six foot set half uh, play the piano? You ask him about some of those early Arsenal games and he says, I have to tell you, I can't remember. Yeah. It was through a haze. How do you remember manage to, this? How do you manage to play so well if you're drinking that amount? It's unbelievable, isn't it? What a year to get your testimonial when you win the double. Could have turned it down. And it could not be more merited. If he got some help from on high, you can understand that. With the timing of it all. The double winners. The trophies are on display tonight, which didn't happen on Saturday. It was just the premiership. Now, Claire Tomlinson. Tony, Tony, I'm Adams. not sure if you've got any breath left after running around the bench like that. It was been a fantastic, fantastic night. Is it what you expected? Amazing. I'm lost for words. I was right at the uh, Ian Wright of celebrating that, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, fantastic. I don't think I can do one more day about one more year at the moment, the way my knee feels, but uh, they're, they're amazing. Absolutely amazing. The legendary back four back together and Steve Bolt lasted a whole hour. I think Boldy was exceptional, wasn't he? He looked fitter than me. I was, I was getting a bit embarrassed actually because they were all performing so well. Thought I'd better do something, but they were amazing.
And did be everyone connected with Arsenal Football Club have been so good to me. They really have. And especially the fans have been wonderful. Did Bate write the script, Lee Dixon, on his last appearance, oh, getting the goal? Wasn't it? Fantastic, isn't it? It's just so... I'm pleased for him. They've, they've been, you know, with me all the way. So, uh, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't dream, you know, when I got the opportunity to get them back playing with me. Um, I said... <laughs> Um, we have to mention Celtic, it was a high tempo they set for a friendly. Uh, fantastic as well, their support's amazing. Um, but this takes some beating. The Arsenal boys are, are fantastic. Oh, you know I'm going to ask you this. Just to remind us again, the fans are singing one more year. What's the thought process going to be? I can say, I don't know, I do one more day with my knee at the moment, but I'll have a rest and have a look at it and talk with the manager and say. Tony, you've given us a lot of pleasure over the years. Enjoy your night. What a transformation. The family's here tonight, and rightly so. There must have been times when perhaps they didn't see such a happy ending. If indeed this is to be the ending. Kenny Sandler, do you think anything that's happened for Adams tonight will influence what his decision will be? No, I think Tony, what he said there, and I, I know Tony really well, and I, he will have a sit down and a long think about it. And, and when you've got a night like this, of course you want to play. He said about winning the cup final, he said it was...